get her back on the right foot after that Stanford outing. Yeah, she has yet to allow more than an earned run in a game so far this year, but Mike White told us that he thought she was pretty nervous for some reason against Stanford. For good reason, I would think that was a postseason atmosphere. You're going up against one of the top pitchers in the nation, Nyjah Kennedy, and the pressure was on. Well, pressure on a, a ranked matchup, a great pitcher on the other side, but at the same time, you're at home for the first time with a big matchup like that. So nerves are expected. Mark Kumpion and the Texans in their fourth year at the D1 level. Coach Kumpion has done a heck of a job winning more than 60% of the games he has coached now in his eighth year, Tarleton State with Jermaine Wallace and Hill ready to lead off again, coming off a 6-4 victory earlier today over Hofstra. The Texans hitting 285 on the season. And we're underway in the nightcap here from McCombs Field. Texas's pitching staff, top five in the nation in ERA heading into this tournament. They entered the weekend with an ERA of .88. Haven't finished a year with a sub ERA since. Any guesses? I think you know the answer. 2006? Yes, you are correct. Your last season. Well, that just goes to show the experience that the Texas pitching staff has. They return every arm from last year. They added freshman Tegan Kavan, who is one of the best freshmen in the country. So a year of experience under the belt force at Lali Gutierrez. Sophia Simpson, Estelle Check adjusting to roles that are more in the relief situation. And then Mac Morgan and Tegan Kavan completing the starting rotation with Sitlali Gutierrez. But Coach White also with the addition of the third assistant that staffs can have now went ahead and hired Patty Ruth Taylor. She's taken over the day-to-day -day pitching duties in the bullpen with the pitchers, calling pitches. So pitchers getting a little bit more love right now. Jermaine to left, Henry backing up and makes the grab in front of the track. Talk about the defense for Texas, the outfield the same as it's been over the past few games, the infield a little bit different. Alyssa Washington getting the start at short. Leanne Good at second, Katie Sim is over at first. And Reese Atwood back behind the dish. Here is Kayla Wallace at the plate. Wallace, the team leader in home runs, hit nearly 350 a season ago. <laughs> Sitlali Gutierrez earning Big 12 Pitcher of the Week earlier in the season after the big complete game win over then number two Tennessee. That was the highest ranked team Texas had beaten in two years. That's why if you're a, a fan or a common viewer, you might ask, okay, why are there nerves in the start against Stanford when she went ahead and really dominated the Tennessee offense? But weekend to weekend, you get home for the first time, you're under the bright lights. There's a lot that goes into play and you want an athlete to be able to keep their nerves in check, but sometimes they get the best of you and that experience starts to teach you how to handle that. She still has only allowed two earned runs in 20 innings this year. Gutierrez throws three speeds, so if you're an offensive coach trying to come up with a game plan, it's really hard to figure out which speed you're going to sit. Her drop ball can get into the upper 60s. Her slow curve takes about six to eight miles an hour off of that, and then somewhere in the middle of that is her off-speed drop. So you really have to figure out which speed you're going to time up, and at the same time, Coach Patty Ruth Taylor's done a great job of being able to mix those and not be as predictable. And the coaching staff talked about Sit Lolly being overlooked a little bit heading into the season. Of course, the talk with Texas is always their offense. You had the returners like Mac Morgan as well as Stelchak. Newcomer in Tegan Kavan. The Gutierrez is off to a great start, a microscopic ERA of .70 right now. It's interesting to see the cycles that programs go 
in because you talk about Texas being talked about for their offense and for the longest time Texas was a pitching program and I'm not just saying myself Blair Luna after <laughs> Absolutely. me there have been a number of com combinations of pitchers that have kept the Texas program relevant good is there for the out and the staff is no different but you just have an offense that's putting up numbers that are crazy that that's what everyone looks at and talks about as a pitcher you must absolutely love seeing the support this staff is getting from their offense I love it. Someone asked me once, you know, oh, what would it have been like? Can you can you imagine if you had had this offense? And I just said, I try not to. <laughs> I purposely didn't bring it up until you did. Kelsey Hill waves at that one. And you, you play the hand you're dealt. Uh, obviously, loved yes. my four years here, and we made it to the World Series three times. So we had enough offense, and that's what you need, just enough, right? Whatever you say. <laughs> Kelsey Hill leading the team with a 474 average. Chops it over to good. Solid at second, a one, two, three, top of the first inning. To protect herself against pitches that were she was susceptible to last year. There you see already 34 RBIs too. Reese Atwood's gonna climb that record book, single season and career, before she's done here at Texas. Well, for the second straight game, Caden Henry, the freshman, will lead off for the Longhorns, followed by Scott Stewart and then Atwood, Texas coming off 10 runs in five innings. That run rule victory over Northwestern State. Henry in a bit of a slump the last few games, but when you're slumping and still hitting 462, that's a pretty good sign. 462. Former national player of the week. Top five recruit at a Dickinson, Texas. Between Houston and Galveston. Another dynamic left-handed hitter that Coach White and Coach Singleton have recruited. Has the speed, can play the short game. She has power though too. We saw two home runs in Clearwater, Florida against Stanford off her bat. 2-1 from Alexa Ramirez. And that one misses to Henry. Texas entered the tournament hitting 392, second best average in the country. Henry back up the middle and delivers with a base knock. Hit number one off Alexa Ramirez, the junior transfer from Eastern Illinois, is undefeated on the young season entering this one. Well, patient at bat right there by Henry. Ramirez gonna work drop change, try to stay low in the zone. But Henry waiting her out there. Henry's going, got speed to burn, but she's thrown out at second. Close call. You can see the freshman shaking her head, Mike White. This is a pitch up in the zone that allows Hill to get in throwing position, and it's a great throw. But the glove comes down inside of Caden Henry's foot as it's on the bag already. Coach Mike Wright White real quick to signal for a review. Another look. You see. Yeah, she's in the bag right there already. And the tag goes into that backside foot. It appears to be safe, even if it's a tie that goes to the runner. That's a well, that's a tag play. And so the, I just think that front foot gets in there before that tag comes because the tag goes between her legs. So right there already. And you see how she's popping up. Looks obvious here, but we'll have to see if the umpires agree. The throw was from Kaylin Hill, the junior catcher. A close up look there. The tag by Tristan Troll. I look right there, Henry's foot is on the bag. 
and then th the tag comes down. It appears to be they continue to look at this one. And Henry single to lead off the game. It was four for five in stolen bases on the season before that play. It appears that by the time she tagged that right foot, the left one already on the back. Yeah, I really think that left foot gets in there before the tag's made. They are done with the review. Call stands. Just like we thought. Well, again, the evidence has to be inconclusive, and it was close. I do think the left foot snuck in there, but. A nice throw, as we said, from Kaylin Hill behind the dish, the transfer from Seattle. So one away in the count, 1-0. Make it 2-0 to Mia Scott. Scott had a triple in the last game. I think 4.05 on the year. And Texas has not run that often this season. Now 27 of 32 on the year in stolen bases. At least compared to years past when they used to run a lot more. When you have the offense they have that consistently puts up hits and is able to move runners, you don't have to put them in motion as much. And even right there, Caden Henry has the speed to steal second to where if Mia Scott gets a base hit, she can score. But at the same time, Ramirez is having a hard time throwing strikes. So you don't have to necessarily put runners in motion. Let her go ahead and dictate the pace of the game. First two batters have reached for Texas. Well, here comes Katie Stewart, the freshman who delivered the long ball, the third of her young Texas career in the last game. She's done it all so far offensively for Texas. This season hitting 450. Three homers and five doubles as time is called. Twelve walks as well. And Hill will head out to the circle to have a chat with Ramirez. Well, Ramirez has gotten behind every hitter. She's really only thrown three pitches close to the zone so far and three hitters. So Hill doing her job, trying to calm her down a little bit. Plus, I think that first pitch to Katie Stewart that was waved off might have disrupted the timing just a little bit. Stewart doing a good job putting her hand up, making sure the timing is on her time and not let Ramirez quick pitch her. We do have the pitch clock in play too, so hitters and pitchers both have to be aware of that. That one misses to Stewart, who has reached in 13 straight games. And in 14 of her first 15 games as a Longhorn. Automatic offense. And the count goes 3-0. I have to imagine if you're Coach White, you're really pleased with what Katie Stewart's doing, not just by numbers. We talked to him early in season, and he talked about he knew what she her potential was, but was she going to be able to handle the ups and downs of Division I and against elite pitching? And she's really left no question that she's fully capable of handling it. The question will be now, can she maintain that once they start conference play and someone faces you three times and gets the book on you? But... So far, another freshman class that is really shining bright here for Texas. It is one of the sophomore. Three were strikes, and those were the only three that were close to the zone, so the control issue is something Tarleton's not going to wait around to see if she can regain control. Go ahead and hand the ball off. And again, our game is trending to where it's more of a staff mentality, and so you have the next pitcher up ready to go once the first inning starts. Reese Atwood takes strike two, the reigning National Player of the Week for the second time this season. 
leading the nation in home runs and RBIs. Sends one into the gap in right center, and she's going to drive in at least one more. Here comes Stort holding up at third, and Atwood puts the horns on the board with an RBI double. Well, Marquez trying to go the outer half, and this is a place where Reese Atwood struggled last year a little bit as a freshman. This pitch up in the zone. She's able to cover the plate, drives it to right center. First RBI for Texas, but great piece of hitting by Reese Atwood. Sometimes you get in this groove of power hitting. You can get in a tendency to always try to pull the ball, going with that to right center. Extra base hit for Reese Atwood. I just can't get over her season so far. Fifth double of the year, 10 home runs, 35 RBIs. And we're just in Texas's 16th game of the season. 0-1 to Leanne Good. She's starting to heat up, has the average up to 300. A hit in three straight games. Bumped up to the five spot in the order. Good with the base knock. Stewart comes home. Here comes Reese Atwood, and Texas jumps out to the 3 nothing lead. Another pitch, middle outer half, still up in the zone. Texas just taking that curveball, going with it. Man, good. Doesn't have to do anything fancy, just finds the hole. Coach White waving everyone home. That's a scary sight. If you already have one of the top offenses in America and then Leanne Good starts to round into the form we saw a year ago when she was a top 25 freshman of the year finalist. Look out, three nothing Texas here with still one away in the first. A single, a couple of walks, a double, and then moments ago, a two run single by Good. Here's Alyssa Washington. Came on as a defensive replacement for Vivi Martinez in the last game. And starting tonight. Hit and run was on. The other thing that makes Texas offense so hard to pitch and defend against is the fact there's not a cookie cutter approach to each hitter. So there's not just one overall philosophy where you can say, oh, they can't hit curveballs well. There might be one or two hitters that don't hit it really well, but it's not the entire lineup. So you really have to be on your game to be able to mix both sides of the plate, use an off speed, be able to stretch up or down in the zone without being too predictable. Coach White said he liked that when he was hiring and he talked with Steve Singleton. It was the fact that he didn't have a cookie cutter approach. He wanted hit, he wanted somebody who could come in, meet the athletes where they're at, enhance them, but have a dynamic offense. And I'd say about nine runs a game is pretty dynamic. Washington off of the third baseman, Schaefer. Everybody's safe. Well, nine runs a game is dynamic, the way they do it. A lot of power, but their short game, they consistently can drive, as we saw Reese Atwood making headlines because of her home run numbers, but RBI double two hitters ago. And just the pressure they put on the defense, knowing how hard they hit the ball, but at the same time, the way they can play small ball and control the barrel head. Katie Sim is earning the start in the nightcap. 273 hitter this year for her career. That average is hovering right around 260. Over to short, and it gets past Troll. Here comes Good. And Texas in business here in the first inning, now up 4 nothing. Well, there are so many things that Texas did right here. Katie Simmons hits the chopper. You see Leanne Good knows she can beat it, so she goes ahead and runs in front of Troll without having interference. Coach White sends her, and knowing that Leanne Good is scoring, Alyssa Washington goes ahead and keeps going to third. 
But Texas base running on point, forcing the Texans to have to make some good plays. A rule that a single for Katie Simmons that drives in another run. Here is Ashton Maloney. 367 hitter on the year. So Texas in this inning, couple of singles, couple of walks, a double. And then reaching on an error. Well, to me, the key part of that play was Leanne Good knowing she could beat it. So she didn't hesitate and give Troll a good look at it. She went ahead, beat it. Troll's eyesight was then distracted with Good running in front of her, and that ball just bounces right under her glove. So good base running by Leanne Good. Helping Katie Simmons get a little single there. Absolutely. Simmons is on second, Washington at third. One, two misses. Maloney to left field. Wallace is there. But the runner will tag and score as Washington comes home to make it 5 nothing Texas. Well, the third inning has been the big one for Texas this year, but they have exploded out of the gates in this one. And Bella Dayton comes up now in the nine spot with two way, five runs off four hits, and a couple of walks for Texas as Dayton takes ball one. Well, if I'm the coaching staff for Texas, knowing that your offense eventually does get going and puts up, you know, average nine runs a game. The challenge is going to be how quickly can we get that offense going? And so far, two games, Texas has been able to score in the first inning. And again, as a pitcher, that when you can see that your offense can put up runs early and continue to put them up, you can relax just a little bit. Yeah, plenty of run support for Sitlali Gutierrez here in the first inning. Bella Dayton, meanwhile, came up with a walk and a hit in the last game, a Texas win. So after that one, Texas is 29 and 4 when she gets a hit in the last two seasons. Big catalyst for this offense who led off for most of the season. when you come up with stats like that. Meanwhile, Just random stats. Meanwhile, my stat is that there's three balls on the roof over here. <laughs> That's important that, too, Kat. Now that Bella hit that foul ball over there. There's another one. <laughs> Texas got started with the Caden Henry single. Scott and Stewart walked Atwood with another extra base hit. That has her teammates on their feet in the dugout, waving their hands. Up by five. What is that signal? Just a second. So anytime there's twos across the board, so two balls, two strikes, two outs, there's always a um, kind of some, some type of ritual you mm -hmm. do to get the luck on your side, whether it's a hit or a ball. And so uh, ours was actually kind of similar to that. Y'all were superstitious just a little bit? Yeah, it's superstitious. It's also just to get you in the game. So anytime, you know, you just yell twos. And we would, they were waving, but we would tap our visors. And then as the pitcher started to throw, you <laughs> kind of knock on your head. And then I think we stomped when she was throwing. So something like that. Whatever they're doing, it's working so far. This one is Dayton continues to fight in this at bat. have at least a 10 pitch at bat. Marquez continuing to use the outer half right now and Bella Dayton just a little bit late on it. Haven't seen an off-speed pitch from Marquez in the zone. 
might be a good option, but at the same time, if the control isn't there. Dayton to shallow center field. Hill charging in and makes the grab on the run. Texas plates five in the first inning of four hits this year entering tonight's contest. As his four, five, and six hitters are due up. I'm talking to him about the first three weeks of season so far. He said, you know, they were still trying to find themselves. They've had a few injuries that have made them have to mix and match the lineup. But also saying it's the most hardworking and best group he's had so far. He's really excited about the talent that they've been able to get in, not just recruiting, but also transfers. So they're able to start to make some noise in the WAC. But back-to-back 30-win -back seasons, he's got to be feeling pretty good about the way the program's trending. And one of the high-scoring teams in that conference. And while there's Mia Scott, rock solid at third. Three straight ground outs induced by Sitlali Gutierrez. Always calm and poised out there. And even if she was nervous against Stanford, she doesn't show it on her face. Very stoic out there. No, she's stoic. She's pretty even keel personality wise. You never see her get too high or too low. Really, to be honest, I think Texas fans were probably surprised at how much she did get the ball last year, but she was extremely successful and was able to be a strong, viable option for Texas, especially down the stretch. Had a no hitter last year as this one backs up Washington, who makes the play. Two away. There's Kaitlin Hill, a junior transfer. Formerly of Seattle, threw out Caden Henry to begin the game. And hit nearly 200 in two, 302 years with Seattle. You now play with her sister, Kelsey Hill, center fielder. Yeah, Coach Kumpian talking about, didn't really know she was going in the portal. Sister didn't talk about her a lot, and then all of a sudden they saw her name and he said it was a pretty easy draw. Let her come play one year with her sister. Pops up to good. Six pitch inning for Sitlali Gutierrez. Still 5 0 Texas. The first inning was then thrown out, trying to steal second. Swings and drives this one to deep left field. Third of her career. Well, we saw her patient in her first at bat, worked a 3 1 count before driving the ball up the middle. Knowing Marquez has been throwing the lefties outside, Bella Dayton saw eight of them. Caden Henry on time with this one. Opposite field home run. First pitch of the second inning for Caden Henry. I will say it again, Mike White told us she has surprising power. Only hit four home runs last year during her senior year of high school. Has already hit three through now 16 games in her first year of college. Mia Scott sends one to right. One away. Well, and some other news and notes from around the country. So Oklahoma ranked number one, Texas right behind them at two. The Sooners opened up their brand new stadium today in Norman, and that one went down to the wire. That went down the wire in true Oklahoma fashion. If you let them have the last at bat, they walked off 9-7 against Miami of Ohio. Kinsey Hansen with a two-run walk-off home run to Kristen Loves Field. They were trailing for a while in that game. Found a way to pull it out up in Norman. Texas up big here, six runs off five hits. And two home runs earlier today in the run rule win over Northwestern State. One so far in this one a moment ago. I'm really excited to, uh, to see what that stadium looks like. Absolutely. I can't say I willingly have gone back to Norman, Oklahoma too often, but. Uh, Reluctantly. 
may have to see, as long as OU's on the SEC schedule next year, might have to make that trip to see that new stadium. I'm sure the fans treat you with respect. Oh, they are very nice. They, they better be. They actually are, they, they are very nice. Um, you know, we were actually just talking about it. My retirement jersey ceremony was against Oklahoma, and so many of their fans uh, were were great in the stands, but even just social media-wise afterwards. So. That's right, because that same day you inspired the team. Texas became the first team to beat Oklahoma right after your ceremony. Maybe a little good juju on the mound for Haley Dolcini that day. Absolutely. That one is a rocket past the pitcher Marquez and Katie Stewart. I mean, she is just an offensive machine. This pitch, trying to get the outer half over the middle, and Katie Stewart takes it right back up the middle. What I love about this freshman is not just the way she hits, because obviously it's consistent, but every swing is on a good pitch. She's disciplined and not trying to do too much. She has strength, but you don't, she's not swinging for the fence every time she swings the bat. Replaced by the pinch runner, Adea Wallace, over at first. So Stort has reached twice in this one, and earlier today against Tarleton State, reached three times. Here's Reese Atwood. Had a run scoring double in the first. And what can you say about Atwood again? Just the numbers hard to believe. And again, Mike White told us when he first recruited her, she reminded him of Aubrey Monroe, your former teammate on the U.S. Olympic team. Brilliant defensive catcher. So that's what Mike White was kind of thinking when he brought her in. Okay, she's going to have great defense. Didn't really talk about the offense too much. She was good offensively last year, 11 home runs, but nothing like this. When I think she saw glimpses of what she can do. You know, you watched her walk off three straight games with big hits. She had a home run against Kelly Maxwell, who was virtually untouchable at the time. So she saw glimpses of, of what she can be as an offensive player, and she went to work. She'll tell you, she's been hitting it hard in the weight room to be stronger. Wallace is going, and the freshman is safe. We've been able to see her go opposite field a little bit more this year than she has in years past. So really a great opportunity for Reese Atwood to grow as a player, and it's paying off as far as outcomes go. Extremely hard worker. That's paying off one home run shy of last year's total. Awaits the 2-2. Sends it to right field. That one bobbled, and LaRue ends up hanging onto it. Second out of the inning. All smiles. Here comes Leanne Good. Two-run single in the first inning, hitting 3.33. Set a Texas freshman record last year with a 10-game hitting streak. She's got her second hit of the night in this one. Makes it a 7-0 ball game, and we're only in the second. Texas pounding the middle of the field right now. Another single up the middle. Leanne Good with another RBI, three RBIs on the night. The speed of Adea Wallace off the bat with two outs. She was going. Not a chance for Tarleton to get her at home. And again for Mike White, so many options to choose from. When you look at who is in and out of the lineup, we haven't even seen Jolie Mitchell yet in this game. She's been terrific offensively. Here's Alyssa Washington, who reached on an error in the first. The depth of this roster is just going to be an advantage that Texas is going to have all season long, being able to have a next man up mentality with someone who has experience, who has quality outcomes. talk about it. Alyssa Washington went in for Viviana Martinez last game and Texas didn't miss a beat. And Texas shoring up their defense. 
or at least attempting to. Washington launches one to deep left center, and the captain has left the yard. Well, they say hitting is contagious, and right now Texas is just passing the bat down the order Everyone getting in on the action. Flexing some power here, Alyssa Washington. She didn't just leave the yard, she left the deepest part of the yard there in dead center field. She seems like one of those players who, with more responsibility, is stepping up her game a level. She's putting up offensive numbers so far this year that we really hadn't seen from her in the past. And that continues, nine nothing, nine runs off of eight hits, two home runs in this one for Texas. Here is Katie Simmons, who singled in the first inning. To your point, Alex, Alyssa Washington was inserted at shortstop in 2022, right when the turn, the team took that turn after the Clearwater tournament and started to go on a run. And she was so solid defensively that everyone. Wow. Sorry, hold that thought. Bobbled in right. Simmons ends up on second. At so, this rate, you're never going to have a chance to finish your story. Finish story. Uh, but she was put in defensively, and she put up good offensive numbers, was overlooked. But then last year, I think with the graduation of Janae Jefferson, there was a little bit more pressure on her to really hone in and carry more of the offensive load. Might have put some pressure on her. I could be wrong, but I think she's just playing more free like we saw her that 2022 season when there weren't as many expectations on her. But now with the team performing the way it is, she doesn't have to carry the load or feel like the load is put on her. Even though they put that C on her chest, she's been able to play pretty free. Yeah, she has delivered. And this inning continuing for Texas with two outs. So Sim is on second. We have a pinch hitter for the Longhorns. Comes the freshman Ryan Brown still looking for the first hit of her career 0 for 2 so far in a Longhorns uniform. Does have one walk. On her resume. Top 50 recruit coming out of Tennessee. Take strike one. Well two outs hasn't phased Texas today. 10 RBIs on the day with two outs. Phenomenal numbers. Ryan Brown in her last year of high school, Thompson Station, Tennessee, 600 batting average, 14 home runs. Stole nearly 30 bases as well. Good eye here. She works the count in her favor. A good opportunity here for her to see some pitches, also be able to go in with an at-bat that she can swing freely. Did you talk about the power that Simmons and, or excuse me, Stewart and Reese Atwood show? When Ryan Brown gets a hold of one, there's some comparable power. Yeah, she adjusts to the next level too. Her and Katie Stewart can be fun to watch for the next four years. Yeah, she hit one over the video board in practice one day. We'll see what she does here. Sends the 2-2 to right field. LaRue makes the grab. So the inning come from our Kumpion's program, improving every season since entering D1, but with a large hill to climb in this one. Down by nine. Defensive change, by the way, for Texas. Adea Wallace taking over in right field. Coach Kumpion talking about that stadium. They added turf, the grandstands. He said it just gave them more of a D1 feel and phase one of new locker rooms for baseball, softball, and tennis, because tennis has moved out there and is underway, and eventually a weight room out there for them as well. So big moves for the Texans as they continue this transition. And this is the last year of their transition period into D1. It's a great selling point, great for recruiting. And coming off a nice win earlier today over Hofstra. Longhorn Invitational will continue tomorrow. Chopped over to short, Washington 
Nice play. And sit Lolly Gutierrez has had a lot of time in between innings here as her offense has put nine on the board, but continues to get Tarleton State batters to ground out. And five of seven outs have been on the ground. That was a smooth play by Washington up the middle. I like the her ability to shift her feet just enough that she got that side off um, throw off. What do you do with all that free time in between innings? First inning, she got a half hour to sit there and wait. I do know the first inning she went down and threw a little bit in the bullpen to keep herself loose, but you know, put a jacket on, maybe a heat pack. I would probably grab a snack. Where'd your go-to? Chocolate Teddy Grahams. There's a strike from Sitlali Gutierrez. Or goldfish. I like the sugar better. No energy drinks. No, those weren't a thing. We didn't, we didn't really have energy drinks in school, so. O2 misses from Gutierrez who on the season 10 strikeouts and a couple of walks. Oh, fun stat that we found thanks to our friends at 643 at charts. Said Lolly Gutierrez has not walked a hitter when she has two strikes on them. So when she gets two strikes, there has been no walks issued by the sophomore. Tough to come back from again. Just two walks on the year. Cruising so far. We talked about the beginning her three speeds, and she's really able to attack the strike zone so consistently because all three speeds keep a hitter guessing. So while they're putting balls in play, none of them have been incredibly hard because she continues to make speeds. I haven't seen her throw her off-speed curve as much today as we have seen in the past. Two two to Kiana Gibson. The action clock at four. Talking to these pitchers, how much do you feel like that's affected them this year, the action clock? which is of course 20 seconds per pitch. I don't think it's affected them a lot except for if they don't like the pitch call and they're gonna shake it off because then you have to shake off and get a new pitch really fast. So you have to have a catcher that's ready just to call something in. This one hit to left field right at Henry. But most of them have, ha have a routine that doesn't take more than 20 seconds. And to be honest, as a pitching coach, you want them to try to be able to refocus as quickly as possible, so not allowing them to have a lot of that time in the back of the circle to just kind of sit, talk to everyone, throw all the outs around, you know, just get back to work. And we barely seen it called this year in any of our games. Is that one handled by Good over at second? One, two, three. Victoria Hunter hitting 471. And now what will be her 18th at bat of the season? Already has five extra base hits. Hunter trying to beat this one out, unable to. What a way. Well, interesting plan as a pinch hitter. 
a lot of times you do want to swing early in the count because you want to be able to capitalize on a strike thrown, but also a new pitcher, so we don't even know what she throws yet, and you're going out and being aggressive. Well, this is her first collegiate appearance. Facing one of the highest scoring offenses in the country. Caden Henry, the freshman who's two for two with a home run and a single. Well, that's what, there was no scouting report on Riney or anything. So well, you like the aggression. You would like to see more pitches taken so you can get some timing and see what she can throw. But tip your hat too, Riney threw a strike, one for one, and got herself an out. Retires the first two Texas batters she faces. Another pinch hitter for the Longhorns on the way. Vanessa Kiroga will step up to the plate. Provided a nice offensive spark throughout her time on the 40 acres. Career 330 hitter. Mainly as a pinch hitter, three home runs as well. Got hot late last year. Yep. Worked her way into the starting lineup at first base towards the end of the Big 12 conference season. And she went through a stretch where she was on a tear offensively. Started about 10 games, swing and a miss there. Two and one from Riney. Well, Riney mixing a little bit of a rise ball. Saw a change up right there, high in the zone, but changing speeds. <laughs> Texas already with two homers and two doubles in this one. Had a ton of extra base hits earlier today in the 10-2 win over Northwestern State as well. Sends one to left field. That one over the head of Wallace. Vanessa Kiroga ends up on second with a pinch hit double. Kiroga fought off enough pitches to stay alive. This pitch on the outer half just elevated a bit, but she goes well with it over the head of Wallace. Kiroga's second hit of the year, a double to get herself in scoring position. Yeah, she's been a terrific pinch hitter for Texas. Now another runner in scoring position, 10 hits on the night. Here comes Katie Stewart, who in the two games combined earlier today and tonight has now reached five times. Four sixty-three hitter. No real weaknesses in this Texas lineup. Talk about Katie Stewart a lot, but what I like about her is just how calm she is in the box. There's not a ton of pre-swing movement. You don't see a lot of facial expressions. Just maintains a calm demeanor. And really, when you watch her swing, it's, it's effortless power. It's not like you're seeing someone trying to swing for the fence or trying to hit the ball as hard as they can. It's an effortless swing with a lot of pop. She's got a rocket for an arm, too. Played shortstop in high school. At times, reached 80 miles per hour on overhand throws. Played first base. A little bit of catcher for Texas so far this year. Now works the count 3-0. 
she's actually very versatile. Like, as you said, we saw her behind the plate for the first game today. First, third. I don't know that Texas will use her in the middle infield, but as you said, she's played there. Got like a 3 0 hack there. <laughs> Keep a pitcher honest. Why not? Green light for the freshman. And earns her 14th walk of the season in her 16th game. She's now reached six times. And the two games combined, and here comes Reese. Reese Atwood, one for two with an RBI double in the first, and take a look at where she's distributing the ball. Well, this is her distribution this year, and you see she covers the entire outfield and both sides up the middle. Last year, she was primarily to the left side and only that middle angle up the middle of the infield. So really being able to now hit to the right to center to right field much better, which allows pitchers not to be able to execute only on one side of the plate against her. That one gets away from the catcher hill. The runners advance to in scoring position. And that explains why Reese Atwood's numbers have taken such a huge leap. You have two outs now in two out situations this year. She's hitting 824. And as he said, has really improved the opposite field hitting. Coach White talked about that. And the other aspect that she was vulnerable in last year was the off speed pitch. And he said she started to be able to recognize that a little bit better. Also be able to understand when they're throwing it to her in at bats and been able to drive that pitch hard too. So when you take an off-speed pitch like that out of a pitcher's hands, it's hard to pitch to you. Atwood's stellar season continues. She makes it 11-0 Longhorns. Well, this is a change up on the outer half, and Reese Atwood just takes it up the middle. Again, Texas not trying to do too much, just continuing to pass the bat. But Reese Atwood picks up Two more RBIs. She's gonna have more RBIs <laughs> by the end of this weekend than she did all of last year. Homered earlier today in this game, two for two with two doubles, three RBIs. Here's Leanne Good. She's driven in three as well with a couple of singles. Oh, Leanne Good. Absolutely gets into one, and she goes deep. Leanne Good with her first home run of the season. Texas excited to see the offensive output that Leanne Good has put together today. The sophomore not in opening day starting lineup due to coming back from a wrist surgery. Texas has brought her along a little bit slowly, just let her get bats a few at a time, but she is hot today. Texas extends their national lead to 26 home runs in 16 games. Leanne Good now three for three and again. If she returns to form, look out. Here's Alyssa Washington. She hit a home run in the second inning. I mean, this is just unreal tonight. 13 runs off 12 hits. Three home runs in three innings. So Lolly Gutierrez is going to need an ice pack because she has been sitting there for a long, long time. Ice pack or heating pad? Heating pad. Heating pad, there you go. So. I'd imagine she has a jacket on. Usually they have heating pads in the dugout. There should be one on her shoulder, probably on her back a little bit, just to keep everything loose. Texas with five runs in the bottom of the first, two, uh, four in the bottom of the second, and four more here in the bottom of the third.
Texas well on their way to run rule victory number eight on the year. Washington to deep left center, making two home runs on the night for the captain. Texas right now just seeing the ball so well and so big this pitch elevated just a little bit but middle outer half and Alyssa Washington she likes that deep part of the park out there center field left center that goes right of those 14 runs well eight RBIs have come with two outs just in this game alone see what happens here two outs in the first pitch to Katie Simmons this is for ball one. Sim is two for two with a single and a double. Let's bump that average up to 385. What's up? Katie Simmons pinch hit in game one today. Earned herself a walk. Then earned herself the start at first base and making the most of this opportunity so far. Two quality at bats. Well, if you're Mark Kumpion, what's the message to your team here? You're having a nice season. Obviously, tonight not going your way. We have to remember they got the win earlier today against Hofstra, so they're going to focus on what they did well there. You know what you're going up against, against a number two ranked Texas and the offensive output that they can have. And so you regroup and you don't have to face Texas tomorrow. So what did you do well? What do you need to focus on there in order to come out tomorrow with a win? Sim is over the head of LaRue. She's digging for two. And Katie Simmons is three for three on the night. Great piece of hitting right here by Katie Simmons. A pitch on the outer half. Simmons tends to pull the ball, so to go with this pitch with power over the head of LaRue, it's a good sign for Texas in their offense. Here comes the freshman, Ryan Brown, her second at bat of the night. Still looking for the first hit of her career. They count one and one. Katie Simmons with three hits, Leanne Good with three hits. And Katie Stewart has reached three times as well. Brown part of this loaded freshman class that Mike White has brought in. Good eye works the count to three and one. Kendall Daniel trying to use an off-speed pitch, but it just sticking to her hand. Everything is high with that pitch right now. Payoff pitch. And Brown earns her second walk of the season. Texas batting around in this inning. Victoria Hunter. She grounded out earlier in this inning, still hitting 444. Takes ball one. A little more patient against a new pitcher here for Vic Hunter. The first pitch she saw to start this inning. She hit 6'10 in high school, coming out of Houston, 88 career RBIs. Caitlin Hill goes out to talk to Kendall Daniel. Longhorns will. Meet up with Penn State also on Monday night. Penn State just rolling into town today. 
they're getting ready to start their spring break, so started this tournament a little bit later. They can stay to Monday and play. Picked up a game in Waco on Wednesday and then we'll head down the other way on 35 to Texas State. The Hunter back up the middle and the freshman will bring home another Texas run. 15 nothing. Back up to the top of the order we go. Well, this Texas offense is just feeding off of each other. So whether it's a walk or a hit, they're continuing to pass the bat and the next person doing their job. Henry two for three, home run to single member. She was slumping a little bit, was about one for her last 10. And has broken out of that in this one, a dribbler over to short. And the inning comes to an end, but Texas scores six more times here in the bottom. But big shakeup here on the defensive side. Victoria Hunter, as you mentioned, taken over. And the outfield, Texas, with such a clean game compared to the what we saw earlier today, really the past three games, the defense had struggled a bit, but not the case of this one. Second time through the order for Tarleton State, Austin Germain, junior out of San Antonio, coming up to bat against Gutierrez. Empire's taking it a little bit with all the changes being made. Well, that's a, Simmons yeah. to catcher, Atwood to first, Brown to third, Hunter to right. Kiroga to left, Henry to center. Kiroga to left, yeah. <laughs> so making sure everyone ha knows what's going on, so that way if outs are made, no one can say, hey, the change wasn't reported. <laughs> Is anybody still in their same position? <laughs> Washington and good? Yes. There you go. And to Lolly Gutierrez, of course, for now. Fourth, first baseman, number zero, Austin Owen two. But again, we talk about the depth Texas has, but that's also the versatility that you can move people around and not miss a beat. You know, about athletes that can cover ground in the outfield. Haven't seen Katie Simmons behind the plate this season, so getting her some action back there. Strikeout for Sitlali Gutierrez, her first of the night. Well, we've talked about how she can change speeds and Sitlali Gutierrez uses her off-speed drop ball here in under the hands of Austin Germain. You see this tail inside and down. Germain just not able to lay off that one, but good speed change by Sitlali Gutierrez. Kayla Wallace takes ball one. The fans still into it here, at least the young ones. <laughs> Dad's on his phone saying, huh, what? Oh, that one inside on Wallace. Well, this pitch goes up and in, and Wallace just gets her face mask of her helmet out of the way, but that cross Simmons up, so he's unable to glove that one. How hard is it, how difficult is it for a pitcher to stay focused out there in a game like this? Well, you have to be able to play the game within the game. So yes, you have a 15 run lead and one pitch is not gonna make or break the game at this point, but now it's where you start to focus on the little things. How well can you ex execute a circuit, certain sequence? How many times can you work ahead? Sometimes it'll be about pitch efficiency. Let's get off the field as quick as possible. So you have to find small things for yourself to focus on to where you're not just seeing the big picture and relaxing too much out there. Wallace with a base knock. First hit of the night for Tarleton State. They didn't want to say it, but we were looking at it. Gutierrez 
had the no-hitter last year. February 26th against Texas Southern, but can't hold on to this one. Well, Gutierrez got behind in the count against Wallace, was forced to throw a strike. That was supposed to be inside. It was middle in. Wallace being aggressive, not just the first hit, but the first base runner for the Texans. Gutierrez was flirting with a five-inning perfect game if she were able to retire Wallace there. Said base runner on first. Here's Kelsey Hill. I would imagine too for the fielders, the outfielders, it's a little, a little tough. Well, outfield's only gotten one, two balls all night, so you have to really be on your toes and try to find ways to stay engaged in the game. A lot of times you'll see them talking to each other to keep themselves focused. Here's something we haven't touched on yet, Kat. Siblings in the Longhorn Invitational this weekend. The Ruse sisters who we saw earlier today for Northwestern State. Tonight in this one, the Hills and the Rollins for Tarleton State. And that's all I got. Well, we obviously know the Hills it's were 15 not. It's 15 nothing. Yeah. We're unloading everything we well, have. We obviously know the Hills weren't <laughs> recruited together because Kaylin transferred in to play her final year with her sister, Kelsey. Yes. Have to wonder if the others were a package deal the whole time. Or if because they watched Big Sister, they saw Little Sister. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, you'll recruit Big Sister to hope that you get Little Sister. So different. I haven't seen that too well. often in Texas. I don't remember. No, I don't think we've had any. Ever. I don't think we've had any sisters um, in our program. This one to Henry. It really got me thinking back, but I don't think. We do want to remind you that Texas women's basketball will wrap up the regular season tomorrow night at the Moody Center against BYU Senior Night as the Longhorns take on Brigham Young, 7 p.m. Central. Right here on LHS. Now you have me thinking. No, there there haven't been hasn't been a single sibling, right? Texas history? I don't think so. Not even like not on not sharing roster, and I don't think even like on various rosters. There you go. We have found a somewhat interesting topic here in the midst of a 15 to nothing game. I can see the wheels turning. You're going through each team. You're I am. I am. And yeah, we have. Uh, there are, to that point, there's. Uh, we've had some athletes here at Texas whose sisters played at various schools and played against each other. So yeah, you had uh, Erica Wright here at Texas. Her sister, Ashley Wright, was at Texas State. There we go. Conversation yeah, continues as we move on to the bottom of the fourth. Texas up by 15. Chowing down on the popcorn there. Oh, well, there you see. Enjoy this. Got the Sprite, the popcorn. Taking in a 15 nothing game. But yes, conference play begins for the Longhorns. Again, they had to shorten the non-conference schedule. Fewer tournaments this year because of the expanded Big 12. And a couple of those new, new teams, Houston and BYU, will start off Big 12 play against Texas. BYU here in a few weeks. But again, Texas on the road in Houston next weekend. Yeah, Texas goes to Houston next week, has a midweek spring break game at uh, LSU. Comes home for BYU. And then back on the road for a midweek at Florida State before going to UCF. What do we make of the Big 12? Obviously, Oklahoma's Oklahoma. Baylor seems to be improved. Yeah, Baylor's, Baylor's been hot. They had a really good weekend out in California at the Mary Nutter Tournament. Oklahoma State, they lost Kelly Maxwell, but... But they're still, I think, I think Oklahoma State might have been the one team that a lot of people assumed was going to be down, not only with graduation, but Kelly Maxwell transferring out, and they've really been able to make a lot of noise, top 10. You look at the Big 12, two of those four teams that are ranked the top two teams in the nation. But you put them in the SEC a year early, 
and you would have 14 of the 25 teams currently ranked coming out of the SEC. That's going to be very interesting with Texas and Oklahoma entering the SEC, not only for SEC opponents already, but for Texas and Oklahoma. There's not going to be an easy weekend on your schedule anywhere. No cupcakes. Next year is Key Rogo with the leadoff walk. Remember, the next inning, Tarleton State will be down to their final three outs. As we are certainly in run rule territory. Getting a look at the top ten. LSU won earlier tonight. Oklahoma had to rally in their brand new stadium to beat Miami of Ohio with a walk-off hit. Oklahoma State, we talked about, tied for sixth. And you talk about three of the four that are ranked from the Big 12 are there in the top 10. Baylor hovering down 24-25 after the weekend, as we mentioned, that they put together. Katie Stewart gets into one, just a little bit too underneath it. And she's retired for the first time tonight. Reese Atwood will come up for her fourth at bat. She's two for three with a couple of doubles. Three runs driven in. Atwood's numbers on the season so far. 574, 10 home runs, and 37 RBIs. Is that good? <laughs> it's not bad. Just five strikeouts and 47 at bats. I feel like that's a stat line for the season for majority it is. of hitters. She hit 11 home runs all the last year. Reese Atwood to deep left center. That one off the base of the wall. And she will end up with her third double of the night. I saw you raise your hand for a moment. You thought for a second it was gone. It wasn't loud off the bat, but the arc of it, I thought it might be gone. And if she doesn't hit this to dead center, it might actually clear the fence. But nonetheless, Reese Atwood continues her hot hitting, seeing the ball well. More impressive is hitting all parts of the zone. We've seen a number of her home runs come on that up and in pitch. She likes the up pitch. But tonight, she's been able to stay with the down pitch that the Texans have thrown her. We saw her go to right field. It's just amazing how quickly she adjusted to be a more complete hitter. Leanne Good has been a complete hitter tonight. Three for three with a home run and five runs driven in. Are you saying Leanne Good's been good? <laughs> don't, don't do it. That's, it's my job to tell the dad jokes here. You're right. Have you ever wondered why there's no mom jokes? There's an opening for you. Two away. Pulled out all the stops today. Texas with 15 runs off, 16 hits, two away here. Alyssa Washington, what can she do for the encore? Homered in the second inning to drive into. Homered in the third inning, a solo shot. And here she is with two on and two away. She'll drive in another. Atwood rounds third and will head back to third. Alyssa Washington, four RBIs and three hits. The hit parade continues, good grief. Here comes Katie Simmons, three for three. Well, I'm checking the scorebook here. I mean, three hits for Alyssa Washington off of three different pitchers, even. Daniel coming in to face Katie Simmons in the third. Four different Texas hitters have three hits tonight. 
It's on the middle of the order. Sim is Washington good. And Atwood. Texas with five doubles tonight. The single game program record is seven, which they set three years ago against Tarleton State. Sim is up the middle, knocked down by Dickerson, but can't make a play. Atwood scores 17 nothing Texas. That's ball just up the middle, just enough. Dickerson trying to make the diving stop so she can flip, but good effort to keep it in the infield. Katie Sim is four for four. Brown takes ball one. Brown did face Daniel in the third inning, worked herself a walk. Still looking for her first hit of her career. Ryan Brown to left center. And Hill is there. So here we go, Tarleton State down to their final three outs as we enter the fifth. Energy, she's gonna throw a curve, rise off speed, a little bit of a drop. Mixes it well, but really adjusting to this relief role, being able to come in, throws hard, but also being an energy switch. She goes in and she brings the passion. She gets fired up and the team feeds off that. She's only allowed one run on the year, but again, that was unearned. And sliding in to make the grab is the freshman Caden Henry for out number one here in the fifth. Well, Mike White told us that he wasn't thrilled with the team with the way the team played overall last week. It didn't feel like they were clicking on all cylinders. They are clicking on all cylinders tonight. The defense playing great. Pitching has allowed one hit in the offense. Well, it speaks for itself. And you have to imagine the conversations during practice this week were all about the little things and how the little things matter and how they might have snowballed into more than just one run or one base runner last weekend. Two away. But after a few errors in the opening game here, they've been solid on the defensive side. So Lolly Gutierrez is able to use her defense. Only one strikeout on the night for her. That allows the team to be able to rest a little, rest easy a little bit, play free. A lot of momentum going into tomorrow. Tarleton State down to their last out. Jordan Dickerson at the plate for Texas. They have now outscored their opponents this year, 146 to 19. So, so Lolly Gutierrez getting in on the uh, photography action there. He's had plenty of free time to take up hobbies tonight in the dugout. Taking a snapshot of this one, 17-0. That's one you want to remember. A one-hit performance. A full count with two away here in the fifth inning. Martinez. We got photography, we got juggling. That's some skills. And Mia Scott's gonna take her turn. No, not happening. Did she go around? No, and there is.
is the first walk of the year issued by Estelle Check. Two way one on. Kiana Gibson coming up. That was a great off speed pitch by Estelle Check. Jordan Dickerson got fooled. You saw her drop to her knee, but she just barely held the barrel back to earn herself that walk. Second base runner of the night for Tarleton State. The fans feeling it. Texas looking to move to 15 and one on the year. Quick talk between Simmons and Check. I think Simmons is just trying to break up the momentum a little bit. It's obviously on Tarleton's side just a bit with the walk and now being ahead in the count, but again, Simmons is probably like, still we got a 17 run lead. <laughs> Throw strikes. Throw strikes. Don't try to be too perfect. But that's sometimes the hard part as a pitcher in this opportunity too. You want to be able to work on your pitches and not just throw things over the heart of the plate. Basically saying you could give up 15 home runs and we'd still have the lead. Right. Back to back. Batters reach here in the fifth. We'll get it kind of brought it up earlier, but how tough is it to come in a 17 nothing game? Tough to get your mind right there knowing the situation that even a hit or two or three or four won't make a difference. Well, it's that plus, you know, you talked about Silali Gutierrez sitting for long periods of time in between her innings and if you're a stealth check knowing you're the first one on deck to warm up, but the starter has a perfect game going. How quickly can you get warm? Did you get warm in the middle of an offensive inning? There's just a lot that goes into play. And there it is, the final out recorded on the night as Texas records run rule victory number eight on the season, a 17 to nothing win that featured nine extra base hits and four home runs.